Good evening, this is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society, and I want to go over a Class 3 case here that is uh, very important for you to see, or I feel like it is. Uh, there's uh, seven or eight things I want to point out to you as we go along this case. Uh, anyway, uh, it is a non-surgical Class 3 case case where we took out the lower six-year molars and this lady had a periodontal problem and it was a periodontal problem in the family so I knew she had the gene that uh, is lack on periodontal problems uh, and one thing though she wasn't a smoker if she had been a smoker I doubt if I would have uh, ventured into trying this case uh, but she wasn't so we went ahead to try it she had been to uh, two or three different orthodontists to see about getting this corrected and they all wanted to do surgery but uh, she really did not want to do the surgery and uh, I can don't blame her now we took a, a little over two years doing it but I had to stop in the middle of, well, I didn't have to. I thought I would because this periodontally involved molar that we were moving uh, seemed to uh, be worse than it really was. And I'll show you the x-rays on it as we get along here. So let's get started on this. And I'm going to pull her up. She's, uh, you can see the chin is protruding out. And uh, as you look at it from this side you can see the prominence of the chin in this area right here and the little lack of uh, tissue right in this area so we used a lip bumper to move the upper teeth forward a little and we pull the lower teeth back by using class 3 elastics on the uh, upper to some extent. I don't show those here in the deal, but that's what we did. Now, if we look at her teeth, uh, you can tell there's no question about it being a class three. I mean, the uh, look at it from the side, and you see this uh, six year molar right here really should be uh, coming in about somewhere along in here, you see. Uh, instead it's way up here so it's about that for class three and we try to bring this under now we got a little slippage I'm going to show you this case uh, I think it's about 23 years after we got through I happened to find this lady in a town we had moved to uh, Glen Rose, Texas, and her son was in my wife's Sunday school class, and she recognized the name, and she asked if my wife knew uh, anybody, a dentist name, <laughs> White, and uh, so I found her after years, and I still, uh, we have contact with her now and I've seen her recently and really uh, this case is still holding up and it's probably about uh, that was about nine years ago when we took that so uh, it's uh, way on up in the 30 some odd years that it's been out so uh, you you can see this as we go along here now uh, this is a class three on the other side, and she also has a crossbite, and so she probably was a mouth breather, or I'm almost certain she was, and the tongue was in the bottom arch, and it spread out this lower arch more than the upper, so we expanded the upper arch with a just a large O four O wire. Uh, and it uh, worked great. And we had to, I don't know whether it was far enough, we had to put some uh, buckle root torque on the case or not, but I want people to remember that it's got to be done. You have to put the buckle root torque if you're going to bring them out at any length at all. Uh, now, here was the old 40 
this kind of illustrated out that and you can see I'm going to show you later on uh, how much it expanded it now we had a almost 90 degree rotated uh, central in the lower arch down here now when you have a lower central that is rotated that much and you're going to have to, to move this thing around uh, the root of the central like the crown will be up here you know and go down on the central but when you get out here it's it's fairly narrow and if you t take a, a lower central and turn it sideways in the bottom arch down there and there's tissue over it here and you go to turn it around it will nearly always strip through and come through a little bit and uh, it's hard to uh, do anything to it to torque it in uh, because you just have the edge of the central in other words the incisal edge would be somewhere up here and the tooth if you slice through it uh, this side would be something like that maybe not that narrow but anyway you got this flat surface against the tissue and you go to turn it around it's going to push through the tissue and you might as well tell them that before you start and it would be very difficult to get a bracket on the edge of the tooth to torque it in like that so anyway uh, i'll show you what happened it turned out real good now we're going to extract of course these six year molars right here on the bottom arch and in here let's see uh, now here this is showing the case on down the line in 88 I don't have the I have a panorex of that or I mean a cephalometric of it but I don't have it right up here at the front uh, so we're going to jump over this. All right, here is the uh, panorex on this thing when we started. And uh, you can see how far it is, class three. I mean, this is way out here. And we're going to sacrifice this and bring this tooth out. And this tooth will, uh, we leave it in just in case. And it comes down beside the last tooth back here you can see on the uh, the panrex as we'll show you later uh, I don't know why that keeps buzzing like that uh, alright this is the first panrex we and here's a, the second one we took the teeth out and we have the uh, wire on there and start pulling it together nowadays we don't uh, use this small wire to pull it we go and try to get a heavier wire so we can put some torque on these roots and bring them forward as we uh, come through with the case. Now this is your periodontally involved tooth and we're going to move this tooth right up here. Now some of this we're going to come in with class 3 elastics and we do some of that too to close this space. Now this brings the upper arch out some and much of your class 3 cases you'll have a large tongue or something that may be in the lower arch and push this out and you really need double jaw surgery uh, I know an excellent old surgeon in Dallas I've worked with some and he almost always did a double jaw surgery in other words he advanced the maxilla to hold the tongue uh, give the tongue more room if you just back this up and I've backed it up on uh, people in in surgery and if you turn them loose the tongue push this out and you don't do anything to the tongue and it uh, it's hard to do that we've done some tongue surgery but not much and uh, that will 
tend to relapse and I've had some relapse and so we learn to do a class 3 retention and uh, the old surgeons will love you because they, they don't want to do the double saw, uh, double jaw surgery. It's a lot, lot of surgery in there. So anyway, let's get on with it. Uh, here I took a uh, that's number six. I think we took a whole bunch of these panorexes. Now, uh, in number seven, you see they had a uh, little deal like we came out instead of instead of making this loop like this, where we go down and the teeth, the bracket deals are up here, and if you pull on that, it makes the roots go with the crown and uh, here we just use an old mega in other words we had it go like this and we went down with this old mega and went around except this wire went off like that so when we tighten this well, this actually goes forward and we tighten this of course it's up here now but let's have force on these roots trying to pull them this direction and if you tighten and close the space like that the root structure goes right along with the crown now if you see the crown getting ahead of the roots then you either slack off on the pressure you've got or add a little more of this uh, torque it's a torque going uh, backwards and forward on the jaw though it's uh, it's different from just regular torque you put in the arch wire like that and so we did some of that to kind of uh, bring the upper jaw forward a little bit so we give her a little more tongue room uh, to make it stable and it was very stable I mean uh, we looked I'll show it to you 23 years but I know the lady and she comes has some real good friends here in Glenrose, but they've moved away. But I know where she is, and her teeth are still very nice. Now she's brushed the heck out of them, and uh, the, the you can see the, the root structure up there where uh, she's done. I'll show you her teeth, and I don't think she's taking uh, having them clean regular enough. Now here the. Uh, this is the end of the panorexes, or anyway, we brought this tooth forward, and you can see the periodontal involvement. Now, when you take a tooth that's leaning over anything and you straighten it up, uh, it'll look like there's a big trench uh, where if the tooth was laying like uh, this, you see, and uh, you straighten it out, it'll look like there's a... a tremendous amount of bone loss in here but if the attachment stays on there and you set the tooth up uh, the bone level will be where the attachment is if you don't damage it so or if you don't do something to destroy the attachment and coming down like that all right uh, these periodontal problems in the other side and this panorex was taken well, she's 28 years old uh, at this point in here, and this is after we finished the the extraction and pull the teeth together and got it parallel in there, and we'll watch it uh, on further down. I, I don't have. Let's see, her age is 28, but I don't. Let's see, uh, 30 of 11 not sure on that date all right this is 87 and uh this is just uh, put we started to put this soft wire in and uh we moved it around this is where we're gonna twist this uh this central this uh, left central right here 
was really bad. I think we've already twisted it a little bit in here. So we open the space for the central, and if we rotate it, that flat surface is next to the gum. It's going to strip. It just does that anyway. And the only way you could do it is to have something up here and torque this root into the bone before you uh, do it. But it's almost impossible to get a bracket to stick on the edge of the tooth and do some torquing with it. So anyway, we are uh, going from there. I think I skipped one. And this is the side over here. And we took the six-year molar out. Well, we haven't done it yet. Uh, the six-year molar is still in there. So uh, we're expanding this. We should go ahead and remove this uh, six-year molar. I think in the next view or something you'll see. And this is the kind of the appearance of the young lady. Now here we have removed the six-year molar. I really like to be in a stiffer arch wire when we do that, but uh, you couldn't fit in very much over here. You'd just be a round wire a little larger than that so that you could uh, put something in there like we put a Omega and then you c tie this off. If the tail end of the wire coming out of the Omega is like that, and yet it's up here when you hook it up, and then you tie it back with that, and that brings the space together, carries the root structure with the crown as you go back. Now, let's see, I'm going to erase that, and uh, we go on to here. Uh, this is looking straight at it, and you watch the tissue. It's going to strip down here, but then it kind of heals back up but you've lost your attachment uh, so it's not going to be all that great now this was 5 of 87 and we started it in 87 and this I don't have a date on it the upper what we weren't doing much on the upper except we widened it out now here we put an elastic chain to move this together and uh I really like to close it with the arch wire by tying it back, but we uh, use the chain here, and we've got to rotate this. Uh, rotating the cusp is okay. It doesn't tend to strip. It's more of a round root on it. And you see this little elastic we've got hooked on here? See, we have that elastic attached uh it's attached over here, and we wrap it around the tooth, and don't get over the bracket on this side, but hook the onto the bracket without going over the arch wire, and it'll spin that tooth. And that's the most efficient way to rotate one that I know of. Uh, and we've got a whole bunch of rotating teeth in there, so I'll leave that a <laughs> subject. And uh, we're closing into this space almost immediately. Don't extract the tooth and then wait a month or two to start the work. Have the stuff on there. And really, we like to go in the day you take the tooth out. And as soon as it stops bleeding or you keep it packed, start moving the teeth together. That way you don't let these buccal and lingual plates of bone collapse in here. It, in time, it doesn't take very long. It'll collapse until you just have a knife edge and it's hard to bring it to. It'll take a lot longer. So you start uh, moving the teeth together almost immediately uh, when you take the tooth out like that. Oh, uh, let's going here to another and this is a poor picture but it was the only one I had back before we got our digital cameras and all that and uh, this is too much light but we have an 040 an 040 or 40 thousandths wire in here and that's a big thing and uh, some of the 
people we had taken the course, they started calling it the Big Daddy Archwire. It's Bill White's Big Daddy Archwire. And uh, that name stuck. So regardless what we called it, they called it that. And that's what we widen this uh, out with. And you have to watch the uh, teeth as you go out. The teeth tend to go like this. And you want the roots to go. And if, if you're going to go very far, now if you have a tooth that's angled in, you can take it and go out this way and the root stays there. But if you go f too far with them, the root tips in this way as the crown goes in. Of course, the roots are in bone and they don't move near as much as the crown. But we want to put buckle root torque in the tooth tooth uh, to bring that root out and uh, if you wonder about that you just uh, take your hand up here if this, this is the tooth and you come out with a bracket slot and if you tilt it up this way and you prise it down and put it in there then the the wire the wire wants to go back this way that puts the root that way so if you tilt the torque uh, torque it this way and you prise it up and put it into the slot then as that wire is trying to do this and it brings the tooth over this way now if you don't have something strong like this wire this large wire right here tied onto it to hold it out there you can put this buckle root torque in a crown and the torque is strong I mean it uh, you put very much on there then it would make the crown go in and instead of getting buckle root torque you would get lingual crown torque now this if you're not used to talking about torque and you, it's kind of you have to think it out before you get in there but we I think we didn't have to move this very far, so we probably didn't need to uh, do that, and the, the crowns were not tilted in, but they weren't, uh, and they probably were tilted in a little bit because she's a mouth breather, and you have the, uh, if you're a mouth breather, you breathe over your tongue and your tongue is in the bottom arch and it expands your lower teeth and I know that because I was a mouth breather and still am to uh, some extent and my bottom teeth are out too wide and I do have them hitting cusp to cusp and you tend to bite your cheeks and that, that's just the way it is if they're not out there a long way uh, so your upper teeth are designed to keep the cheek out of the way so uh, the buccal cusp or labial to the lingual cusp and so the point of the lingual, the buccal cusp point of the lingual hits in the groove of the upper one. So the way it should work. So anyway, I think she was a mouth breather. I couldn't tell you for sure now it's been a long time since I saw her anyway she stopped doing that and uh, this is the way we expanded the upper arch there uh, now that uh, this wire goes down we got a little dog leg in it going through there so it goes back and we tie it out here and here just to keep it up and it will expand the heck out of just anything you put it, I've never seen a person, we couldn't expand their arch. And it carries a bone structure with the teeth. If you take a group of teeth in, uh, the bone goes with them. And that is a fact, but people uh, really don't believe that. And they so do surgery and all this to move teeth out there. Uh, you don't have to. You can just gradually move a group. Now, if you're just moving one tooth and you go out like this, then that tooth can strip through the bone. I mean, you can, you can mess up your attachment and everything. But if you take the whole bunch, they go out. And this is shown all the time. You know, kids sucking their thumb, they don't pull their teeth out. The bone goes with them. And I've had adults 
that did things that move their front teeth forward and the bone goes with well, them. Well, I don't want to get off on that uh, deal too much here. Let's get back. And uh, so here we're widening the upper arch out, and I'm going to show show you later on how they compare. Now, we're coming to with that, and I need to get a stiffer wire in there if I possibly can, uh, and you can get one in there pretty quick. Now, we've got a stiff wire, a rectangular wire in there now, and this is just an omega here. It's not a, a circle. I've shown you that before, and this tail end of this omega goes down like that. So when you push this in back here, your arch wire is going this way. You pull it up, and now this is trying to bring these back teeth down, and you tie these uh, the arch wire back real tight, and it'll close during there anything. And now we put some class 3 elastics on there, but I don't show them. But you can do that, and you move the upper teeth forward. So we're going to try to move the upper teeth forward, and we put a lip bumper in here, uh, which I'll show you later on. And it's just a lot to learn about this case. And uh, we put it on here earlier years a uh, couple of years ago or something like that and it just people just didn't look at it but i think you really if you're going to do this type of work you really ought to look at this and try to pick up what we did on about seven or eight different things i've mentioned probably five or six already now let's uh, see what we do now we're see we're this wire goes down and we tie it back here after we bring it back up and this starts moving the teeth forward but it moves the root at the same way it moves the crown if the roots get ahead of the crown you've got too much of this or you don't have enough force pulling on the teeth if the crown gets ahead of the root then you need to slack off on the force you're putting in here or else add more of this tip to the arch wire. And that can close any space on any body and it can be a knife edge ridge or anything as long as they're living. And uh, this old idea we used to think that you couldn't straighten the adult's teeth and that is so wrong. Now, look at this uh, central here see how it's stripped off now this you can't turn a flat tooth that's laying right up against the bone you can't rotate it without doing some of this or if you can I'd like to meet you I haven't been able to do it myself now if you could torque to torque them from the edge out there that might uh, work all right let's go ahead and uh, we're in a heavier wire now and she's got these little kind of ceramic brackets on the front i don't really like those things too much but uh, they're broad you don't have a good inner bracket space and i just like these small metal brackets and uh, anyway the upper's doing good and we've expanded it out so it's not in a cross bite anymore and now we're pulling this together and we're going back with the upper, I mean, the lower anterior teeth. I mean, that's from bicuspid on. I mean, all of them. We're just moving all these uh, front teeth back. And we're moving them back by pulling forward on the lower. And also we can hook the class 3 elastics on there if you want to. Now, a lot of times, by the time I get this molar to a class one relation uh, this point will go up in here and go up again in this part right back here now you saw the uh, six-year motor was way out in front like that so I can pull here and I can pull here and if this gets class one and you still haven't got these back to class one then you've got to either put a pin in them 
and stop this or you can do that at first if you want to keep this where it is but the point of this is we want to go back with these or you'd have to put the pin back here and bond it to the molar and you could move these all back and the molars would stay there if you uh, go in and put these little uh, pins or little screws in the bone structure uh, so let's get on with this uh, take too long sometimes but I try to think of the questions that you might have and I'm not talking to uh, usually people that have been doing orthodontics a long time you may be or you may not be I don't know uh, but I'd have to try to get these uh, so uh, people that are just starting in it can know and it is as uh, easy and everything as I can uh, and I don't do too good a job, but sometimes uh, if people write me and they need to know a little more about them or something. Uh, all right, here's, she put on a few pounds at this point, and you see uh, how it changed her appearance and everything, but uh, we're going pretty good on it. Now, here we put this upper lip bumper, and I'm trying to move the upper teeth forward but I don't want to move them this way and leave the roots back here I want to move the the tooth out in other words move the roots out now to move the roots out you've got to kind of take the pressure off and that's really true down here on the bottom where the somebody has a tight lip and they're pulling that lip back and you're trying to push the teeth in and they're pulling back on it. Then you need a lip bumper. Now the lip bumper comes back and puts the pressure back here, whatever pressure the lip puts on it, but it keeps, it stays away from the tissue, about a millimeter or so. And you have a vascular bed there that you can move the roots of the teeth into without any think of it stripping you know you can move the teeth in now as you go to the side uh, with the movement you don't have any pressure with the side uh, cheeks pressing against the teeth very much other than just vacuum uh, from the tongue swallowing there all right let's get on with this a little faster here now this is the lip bumper you see we've expanded this lip bumper and keeping that now you can make these lip bumpers we've shown you how to uh, do it and you just stick them in that auxiliary uh, tube up above you it's usually uh, you put them in your there's a slot in there that has a it'll take a lip bumper or you can put a big uh, arch wire in the other one uh, now now watch this tooth is I want you to look at it as we go along, you see the, the tissue's coming back up around that tooth. That's the one we strip the tooth here off of. Or I'm, I'm sorry, this is the one we took the tissue off. That's the cuspid back there. And uh, you can see it's getting better as we go. All right, uh, let's see. We've got the upper expanded now. And down the bottom, we're really close but we've got to rotate this a little bit and we can do that off of the bracket and here's the second molars except these are not second molars these are wisdom teeth and that's a wisdom tooth this is a second molar but I'll guarantee you that lady can go to ten dentists and I'll bet you there won't be but one but nine I mean, there might be one out of the ten that recognizes that she doesn't have any six-year molars. And you can pull that back. And uh, she didn't want to go have the surgery, which I can uh, certainly agree with her. I have scrubbed in on these surgeries and helped uh, some of them do some. And it is... Uh, you just thank God that, <laughs> that somebody there can heal them up better than you can. And that's a, that's a fact. You get in there and look at uh, what it do, they do to do this surgery like this. All right, this is going on, and uh, we're lining this up. 
and let's see if there's anything else all right we've pretty well finished the upper and we'll go ahead and and work on now i didn't get these roots out as far maybe as i really wanted to the teeth kind of tilted out a little but not you don't notice it much on there uh, but we've got her a wrap around retainer and don't run the darn wire underneath the tooth you're going to hit it and they won't it moves the tooth when they're wearing it. It comes back when they're not. And they get tired of it and don't wear it. So that's something. You can build this retainer where you can't already take it out. And you don't need any clasp on the retainers. If you have something you want to hook a class 2 elastic on, uh, I mean a class 3 elastic on a class three case then you can put a hook back in here and then you put some composite under this tooth and have it sloped kind of like that and the wire well i'm sorry it's this way here and the wires up here and it, they can push that in and it'll snap over and they got to pull that wire over that to get it out and so they take one side out and then the other one will come come out easy. Uh, but you can fix these uh, retainers. You can't hardly take them out of the mouth if you want it that tight. Normally, they have enough suction up there. They just stay without any uh, anything at all putting on it. So anyway, that's uh, the way you use the uh, elastics there. Let me get rid of this. And now we'll go to uh, doing the... Well, that's this other side of the, after we finished, finished it, and that jumped over one. So here's a retainer uh, from the inside, and we leave a, we put a little bite plate. If the bite was deep, you need something there for the lower teeth to fit against and have a track in it. If it's a TMJ case, you have to put a ramp on it to make sure they bring their jaw to a certain position out there to help the jaw joint. Uh, now the bottom is lined up good and we've got things torqued pretty good and we're almost completely through with the spaces. See this tooth is lined up a little better. It still can stand just a wee bit of rotation on it but it looks quite good now. Uh, and here are some other pictures of it. this is 91 and we started in 87 and she's out of it this is the way it was when we started and let's see did i uh all right and here it was the way it was when we started and here it is in 91 and the, there's we took the tooth out and here it is after we did that and uh, just the lower retainer at this point. All right, we did the fix the crossbite and all that good stuff. Now here is the width of the upper arch before we expanded it, and there it is after we uh, expanded the upper arch and got it out over. And this is the lower, and here it is now. Uh, you've got a little space in there. We, it hadn't had time to close the band space we had on the lower second motors. This is right after we took the bands off of the teeth. Now they will come together there, okay. Now, this is the, uh, uh, we put a lower uh, retainer and we put an upper retainer on this young lady and I wanted to hold that together real good you can fix these retainers where you you tighten this up and they'll put pressure on this and you can close space with that now she needs to scale and get those teeth scaled a little better and here now here's another thing I want to show you on this case you see where this chin button is and this was 1987 this was just after we i think we had started it but i'm not sure on that point i'm looking at that but that's 1987 now look at this chin button 
And when we got through with it, the chin, pagodian or the point of the chin back here is still sitting out there. Now a lot of times if that is detracting from the beauty of the face, you can trim this thing and you can move it back and wire it in or shorten it. It's, I've had several cases of chin was sticking out and we had the genioplasty done. I don't think I've shown any uh, cases with that. But that's after the teeth were back. Now this this picture here is taken January the 7th in 2010. Now we started in 87, so you got uh, three years between there and 90. In 90 and 2010, that's 23 years ago. And you see we got the roots of these teeth back here. And those teeth were out here somewhere like that to start with. I'm going to go backward and you take a look at where they were here. And now you look at the length of this and the teeth. We didn't tilt them this way. We carried the whole tooth back as we went. And we also brought these teeth forward and we lowered the lip bumper up here so we could advance this so we didn't have too much of this tilt like this in the tooth. And uh, this case is held up. Now it's 23 years at, at uh, 2010 and you can add another nine years to that and she's still got a nice straight set of teeth in there. So let me go ahead and finish this out now. Uh, here is, well, that's when we first started her. This the case is the way she looked then. And here it is 23 years later. And you can see her facial structure. She's a stewardess. And uh, you may have seen her on an airplane. I don't know. Uh, but she's a real nice lady. And uh, the teeth are in like that. And this is, these pictures were taken 23 years after uh, we started the case. And here's the profile uh, 23 years later. And there are the teeth. Now, she needs to get in and have somebody scale all this stuff out. Let me go back and show you her profile before. Well, there it is. Now, it doesn't look too bad, but you looked at the teeth, and they were in pretty bad shape. And she is a much happier person with this done, and we did not have to do surgery on her. So... uh let me see. I'm going to finish this out and tell you good night because it's late. And I'm, uh, she brushes them good and takes care of them. And the periodontal situation is much better. But she's going to have to have some little fillings put in there on those teeth. I see she's had some up above like that. Uh, now we'll... So this was, that was 2010 when these pictures were taken here. And uh, there the teeth are, and that's 2010. And it's holding up excellent, and it's still, uh, if you see her today, uh, it would be. And that's where the, the Pagodian didn't go back, the teeth went back. So that's the chin button at Pagodia, they call it. Um, anyway, hope you will try doing class three. Now, if it's no periodontal problem in there, it's a dead sense you can do it. But here I had to be very careful. I slowed down at one point to let the roots kind of catch up uh, and get bone around them. I the thought they were going worse. And... Uh, she wanted to do this whether we lost a tooth or not, you know, but we were able to save it. So, I don't know, where does this stop? All right, this is 2010, and that's the end of it. I'm sure you're glad if you're watching it, but I hope you'll uh, uh, 
look at this case even though it takes a while to see it and I can't show a real comprehensive uh, case in any 10 minutes or 5 minutes or they would like for us to make these videos real short but to really show one you got to take some time to do it and I hope you enjoy it and learn something from it and uh, I'm going to hope you subscribe to our channel and everything so I'm going to close out thank you then good night